Dan Minahan, as far as I can tell, you've never worked with Ryan Murphy before. So how did you get involved with American Crime Story? I've been looking for something to do with Ryan for a long time. We've known each other for a number of years. And uh, nothing seemed to quite work out. You know, it wasn't quite a fit. And when he came to me with this project, it just seemed perfect. He was also working, he partnered with um, uh, Brad Simpson and Nina Jacobson. And I've known Brad for many years, so uh, I was very excited and, and uh, willing to get started on this project. So the show is called The Assassination of Gianni Versace. I understand that while it was shooting, it was called Versace, Kunanin, and you know Darren Chris and Edgar Ramirez flipped billing on the call sheet versus the credits. Can you tell me about kind of uh, the shift in focus for the marketing of the show? I think. It just had a, it seemed logical to me that it would be called American Crime Story, The Assassination of Gianni Versace, because I don't think you can really give those two characters parody. I don't think it's fair to honor Andrew Cunan in that way. Although we spent a lot of time trying to understand him and tell the story of how he became the person he was. But uh, this felt like a great title to me. It made perfect sense. Okay, uh, so this is the third show that you've directed out of, or sorry, uh, produced out of about 20 that you've uh, directed. So can you, can you tell me about the difference um, as a producer? Well, I've actually produced, I've been producing for the last five years. I was executive producer and director on Marco Polo on, for two seasons, on House of Cards for a season, and this. I've... Uh, I've really enjoyed working with other directors. What I'm involved with is that everything from script notes to casting to casting directors and then providing support for the directors, making sure they have everything they need. Um, it's, uh, it's very rewarding and it's an opportunity as a director to get to watch other directors work, which is so exciting for me. So you did three out of the nine episodes. So how did you choose your specific episodes? Well, originally, I was uh, planning to shoot the third episode. But uh, for a number of reasons, in, in uh, all of his infinite wisdom, Ryan decided that I should do four and five. And it was the perfect fit. I think as the scripts came in and he got familiar with it, um, he realized that four and five were really a pair. And so, although we had planned never to block shoot any episodes, uh, those two really fit because they had scenes that, that were continuous almost. And we flashed back and forth between uh, the two of them in time shifts. Um, and it was always my intention to uh, shoot the finale, but like, I knew it would be exciting. We all know how it ends, but I was also really curious to see how uh, Tom Rob Smith would resolve the story. And is that the one that you're submitting for Emmy consideration? I'm actually submitting our four for Emmy consideration, uh, The House by the Lake. I feel like uh, it, it's very emotional. I feel like it's the first episode in the series that really clearly states the theme an intention of the series. So to me, of the three that I did, I felt like that one was really outstanding. Now he's been in like a TV movie, an indie movie, but it kind of feels like you discovered Cody Fern and like that's really his first big showcase, that fourth episode. Uh, can you tell me about working with him, uh, how you guys found him, if you're involved with that process? Yeah, um, Brad Simpson, our producer, really has his finger on the pulse of everything and our, our casting uh, directors put him forward. We all checked him out, watched the very little amount of uh, tape that we had on him. I did a little bit of behind the scenes sleuthing and called Christine King, who's a casting director in uh, Sydney that I know. And um, she discovered Heath Ledger. She's incredible. And I worked with her very closely on a number of projects. And uh, she said, yeah, he's really ready and he's really the one you want. Um, so he checked out really well, and he turned out we it turned out we had the most incredible collaboration on set. Um, 
he was always incredibly prepared with something and also extremely willing to swing and experiment with whatever we put forward, you know, as far as the, the direction of a scene and the intention of a scene. He was very exciting to work with. Couldn't be more different from Darren's style, which, um, you know, Cody comes to set very prepared and, and very thoughtful. Darren comes to set and he's kind of jocular and he has a really great energy and he kind of brings everybody up. His preparation, he doesn't really wear it on his sleeve until the moment that you turn the camera on. Uh, but he, I think he likes to kind of keep everybody entertained, but also kind of relaxed because of the, the intense nature of what we were doing. So now he's working on, oh, sorry. Uh, now he's working on the final season of House of Cards. And the last time we saw that show, uh, you were the producing director. Are you still on the show for the final season? No, my uh, responsibility is that American Crime Story it took me out of the running to return to this to the series. And I felt so strongly about this material. It was a hard decision, but I stuck with uh, American Crime Story. Um, as far as I can tell, I spoke to the showrunners yesterday, in fact. Cody's having a great time there, and uh, you know, he's really shining on that show as well. And are you going to be continuing with American Crime Story for the uh, next Katrina season, or are you moving over to any other Ryan Murphy shows? So far, I'm not, uh, I'm not booked to work on Katrina. I may work on another iteration of American Crime Story. I'm very hopeful. I really loved collaborating with all these folks. It's a really unusual uh, and outstanding group of people in Bad Apples. Had a great time. Another performance I wanted to ask you about from the show was Judith Light, because uh, there's some talk about maybe she was just supposed to be like a one episode role. Did you guys bring her back from the finale? Like, was that something that you had always planned, or was it something that was added later? I think people responded so strongly to Judith in the third episode that it made sense to bring her back in the end. We were trying to find a way to tell the story of how this ripple effect of how many lives, you know, Andrew destroyed through these killings. And the other characters we just didn't know as well, the other family members. We had in passing met... Um, uh, David's father and mother. We met Jeff's sister, but it seemed like the Marilyn Miglin character was the one who could embody the grief and the ongoing sort of uncertainty of having this killer of her husband at large. So it just made sense to have uh, have Judith in the finale. So this is obviously a very famous story, but the show is kind of shedding more light on it than probably ever has been. Uh, what did you learn about the story of uh, Gianni Versace and Andrew Cronin and that was like really surprising you uh, just from being involved in this process? I think that the most surprising thing to me was the history of uh, Andrew's education and his family and all the potential that he had. You know, I grew up in the same time period as those characters, um, David, Jeff, and, and Andrew. And, you know, it, I recognize that person. You know, I'm not, not to say that I knew people who were murderers, but, you know, you recognize that kind of ambition in people. And people, there's a lot of pressure on people to succeed. It was the, you know, it was coming out of like the go-go 80s. And, the, the thing that really surprised me was just how how much he had and how much potential he had and uh, the way it turned and the way he, he, he kind of turned his frustration outward on the wall. All right, and what would you say you're particularly proud of uh, with your work on this show versus other ones, like what you accomplished? It, it, I'm particularly proud of the way we honored each of those characters. You know, I feel like the respect that we gave to, to all of the characters, the family members, to David, to Jeff, to Lee Miglin, to the victims, it was really important to me uh, that they were portrayed in a realistic way, in a, 
in a way that wasn't salacious. So I'm particularly proud of that. And I feel like it's surprisingly moving and uh, it's compelling, but it's and entertaining, but it's surprisingly deep and moving. And I feel like uh, we really touched on really important topics about what it was like to live in that time and, uh, and how these people were impacted by this one guy's action. Something that really distinguishes the show is the reverse chronological order of the way the story is told. Uh, so how did you, like what kind of visual markers did you use to make sure that the audience would be able to kind of tell what was happening when? We didn't specifically try to differentiate uh, the time shifts, you know, with colorization or cinematography. I think it was very challenging for audiences, and I think audiences were up to it. You know, I think audiences are incredibly sophisticated in the way that they read the story now. The thing that surprised me about the reverse chronology of telling the story is the fact that it kind of allows the audience to do a forensic, um, you have to kind of connect the dots in the way that a forensic expert would as you're telling the story, you're recognizing things. Oh, that's the gold watch that he gave him. You know, that's the corner where he was murdered. That's where, you know, I mean, I think there were, there were interesting clues almost that you kind of recognized in retrospect. And I think it engages the audience in a really cool way. Now, a few years ago, you were in talks for a Marvel movie, and I'm wondering, is that something that you still hope to do? And also just, like, what else do you have that's uh, coming up? Um, right now, I'm developing a series, uh, a limited series, uh, and uh, that I intend to direct. It's a seven-hour seven hour piece. And I'm also meeting on different features. Yeah, I would like to do a feature. I, I'm, I'm moving in that direction. All right. Well, thanks very much, Dan. Uh, we really enjoyed the show, and we look forward to uh, seeing it at the Emmys this summer. Fantastic. Thank you.